Hey traders, this is Blake Marr with Trader Summit. With me today, I have the one and the only Tracy Shukart. Shy girl, many people know you as Shy Girl. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. <laughs> and and by the way, uh, Tracy, you are with Hedge Fund Telemetry, but you just started something new. So before we actually get into, everybody wants to hear how you how you feel about crude oil and how the, the markets and the current environment. But before we do that, you started something new. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so I'm also with Intelligence Quarterly, and that's at intelligencequarterly.com, which is more of a macro, um, more of a macro uh, publication. Um, and I am doing a metals report for them now. That is super awesome. Well, uh, I'm excited to actually, hopefully, here on Trader Summit, get p bits and pieces of that of your reports. So we can publish them here. So if you like what Tracy does, you know, Tracy and Trader Summit, we've been working together now for uh, a couple of years. So please uh, give her a thumbs up if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to the channel and make sure you're visiting tradersummit.net to get Tracy's work. And then obviously you can, you can uh, reach her uh, through her um, profile down below if you're reading us or watching us on the site. So Tracy, that's super exciting. But you know what's super exciting is crude oil is bunkers right now we you know surged through a hundred a lot of people were targeting a hundred i don't know how many people were targeting you know 115 or whatever or however high we got so quickly um obviously it has been pushed higher because of what's happening with the invasion of ukraine by russia that's obviously put a lot of price pressures higher but what are your thoughts on where crude's at and what we're dealing with right now and is it just russia and ukraine well, you know, no, it's not. I mean, ultimately, and I've been saying this for a long time, I thought we would see, you know, we could see 120 plus, although I thought that would happen this summer. Then again, you know, I didn't know Russia, Ukraine would happen, right. obviously. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, right now, you know, th there's what we're seeing is that we have um, a lot of Russian oil. We haven't sanctioned. Now, we haven't sanctioned Russian oil. Right or anything in the energy s sphere, as far as Russia is concerned. But after SWIFT san sanctions, what we are seeing is people self-sanctioning, meaning people buyers are um, scared to buy, basically, because they don't know what's going to happen. So what we've had is we've had 1.5 million barrels of crude oil taken off the market and about a, uh, about a million barrels of product taken off the market just because of the buyers evaporated, right? Even with the steep discount that is happening right now in Russian year rails. So that's taken a lot of the, you know, the oil off the market, um, which is, you know, squeezed the market higher sure, sure. right and then we're also seeing on kind of the technical side we're seeing you know we're seeing a lot of retail traders trying to short this market what's happening is everybody's trying to short it and they're getting squeezed out so um because i think that uh long you know um if you look at what funds are doing right they've been buying the back end and far far before the whole russian ukraine thing happened um they've been heavily buying in the back end which means they've already expected oil prices to go higher and so what's happening is these sh people the retail trying to short this is squeezing the markets markets higher okay so, so you, you know crude oil's reached you know 115 a little bit higher than that uh, 116.51 uh, the uh, for today's high. So, uh, how do you feel about it at current levels? Do or do you chase it higher here, or do you think you need to let it pull back? Do you think it's even going to pull back? And why? What? What? Like, why would crude go down today versus two weeks from now? Well, uh, we, just, saw we 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 did see it. Sorry. Oh, no, we go did ahead. See it to sort of back off a little bit. We had about you know 115 and change, right? And then we pulled back um, to about. Uh, what was low today? We pulled back to one of one of six, one of six roughly six ish on Iran news, um, saying you know Iranian oil may hit the markets, right? So, I mean, overall, this is very very volatile market, right? We we're we're seeing five to ten dollar moves in a flash. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we have been, and I expect that continue. I mean, we're definitely overbought at this point. Um, so I would not be looking to short this market. I would be looking to 
by the dips. Got it. So where, you know, what would be, what would be a good level to be looking to buy dips? I mean, do you, you, you would you be buying it at a hundred looking at the big figure number, maybe a little bit below that? Cause you got to imagine there's going to be traders trying to, everybody's going to be trying to buy it at a hundred. So if it dips below hundred, just to whack all the stops on everybody trying to buy the right. dip, are you a buyer a little bit lower, maybe around 90, maybe 95? Right. I, I, you know, I, I think that I'm, um, well, I've got a lot of levels below that, but I think that, um, let me move my chart a little bit here. You know, I think that I, I mean, I think what, what you're going to see is there's a huge volume bar at 91.67. So I think that will definitely bounce. I mean, we're already building a volume bar at 105. So if for some reason it gets below that, I think, you know, 91.67 ish is, you know, you'll definitely see a bounce there. I don't foresee any circumstances right now. If we, it, let's say for example, um, we do have Iranian oil comes to markets, okay? Um, here's the problem is that if we have 1.5 million barrels of Russian oil off the market until who knows when, um, even if we signed a deal, an Iranian deal today, right? It would take four months for them to ramp up to about 500K, right? So it's not, the market may have an initial knee-jerk reaction, but when we're talking about overall volumes, it's not going to make that much of a difference, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's a great point. So um, that means that any type of pullback you should be buying then, and hopefully we can get to a reasonable level, whether it's a hundred, maybe it's you know slightly lower to look for new longs, right? Yes. Okay. Um, now we talk a little bit about oil. And by the way, is there anything else that you wanted to mention regarding uh, what's happening with I the Iranian, you know, nuclear deal? Anything else that's like on? I your mean, mind? as far as the Iranian nuclear deal is, you know, I know they're trying to push this through really quickly, but I just want to tell everybody that you know. Congress, there's a bipartisan movement going on right now in Congress where you have the House Republicans basically sent a letter and said, you can't do this without Congress's approval. And then you had um, Senate Democrats also write a letter saying, this will be no good for America and there's no reason to do this. So it's a kind of a bipartisan issue right now. So if the administration goes ahead without Congress's approval, I think that there's going to be a lot of backlash um, within the within the administration and you know with, within Congress. So um, I, just because they say it's a done deal, I don't think it's necessarily going to be a done deal. And we've heard this time and time again. I mean, this summer we heard it over and over again, right? Like there were two times that we came so close, but no cigar <laughs> but right? no cigar so, right i'm just saying just so you know i mean a, a lot of the and and this summer you know when negotiations first started in june and july i mean i think that really factored into the market more so then than now now i think it's just going to be a knee-jerk reaction but that'll get bought back, right back up Okay, well, well, thank you for bringing that up. And I think that's that's maybe one of the other reasons why we're seeing this big breakout in gold. And, and you might have seen this chart uh, as as uh, I, I pulled up charts. Uh, gold has been really, you know, it's broken out. And, and you know, a lot of traders have, have, have been waiting for this to happen. I, I don't know if gold is rallying because of, uh, you know, the reasons of inflationary pressures that people believe. I think gold has obviously gone up more from the geopolitical risks that are uh, surrounding the, the markets in the world right now. But how do you feel about gold and other precious metals at the moment? Yeah, well, I would absolutely agree with you. I think it's more, you know, I mean, we've had inflation, persistent inflation for a while now, right? And we've seen actually oil used as an inflation hedge rather than gold using it as an inflation hedge. So I definitely agree with you 100% that this is more on a geopolitical risk. Um, that said, you know, I mean, we are breaking out. I think over the long term, um, when I'm looking at gold, I think that um, I think if, instead of actually trading gold, you know, I tend to prefer the miners because if we look at the macro environment and just in the mining environment in general, right, and we're seeing this in base metals and uh, other metals such as aluminum. 
and nickel and cobalt, things that are used for uh, EVs. But the gold industry has the same same problem. I mean, it's still lack of capex for the last seven years. Um, you know, you're going to see demand higher uh, throughout. You know, just other products. So I'm, you know, again. The gold market is very volatile and very twitchy. So if you why like the gold market, I personally prefer the miners over, you know, going with an ETF or, you know, straight out gold futures. Well, you can see, you know, this is just the, the, the this isn't the junior miners, but you can see that they are right. above their 200 day moving average. They broke a wedge to the upside. And that is a really great piece of information and advice from, from Tracy. So, you know, Tracy, I, I'll tell you what, I, I'm, I'm excited for the volatility that we are seeing in the markets. Um, it is obviously bringing a lot of uh, trading opportunities for us as traders. Uh, right. I've been warning everybody as much as I could uh, can on on, on, on every every uh, video that I do. You know, keep your position sizing smaller. Um, you know, kind of widen your stops a little bit. Be be aware that there's he- this is a headline driven market. Is there any any other trading advice you'd love to give to the trading community before uh, we uh, sign off? Well, you know, I think that's a you know, I think what traders should do is, you know, there's a lot of micro and uh, mini contracts out there where because the market is so volatile, you can scale in and scale out of trades a lot easier using a lot less leverage, right? Rather than just putting a big contract on. So, I mean, don't be afraid to use those smaller contracts, right? It could, because the market's so volatile, I think it gives you a, a lot more leeway, right? And you don't just get stopped out right away. All right. Well, you know, I guess so. I know it's a silly saying, but it does really matter. Size does matter in the markets. And so, you know, keep your, keep your, keep your trades manageable and, uh, and this way you won't get whipped around so, so easily and it won't hurt so much. And maybe you might be able to sleep a little bit more, right? Right. Exactly. (laughs) All right, Tracy. Well, Hey, um, uh, again, I want to mention, or I want to say, I'm so excited to have you here. I was so excited to hear your, your take on crude oil. Uh, you know, we're, uh, you know, we're going to be looking to buy on dips, you know, let's see how we react if we make a dip back towards a hundred. And I'm really excited about your, your, uh, your, your new, um, venture with market intelligence. And we're excited to read more about, um, read more of your columns from there. All right. Thank you. Well, thanks for being with us. And remember, traders, if you like Tracy and what she does here, make sure you give her a thumbs up. If you're watching us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our great content. Tracy, I'll talk to you very soon and we'll have you on hopefully sooner rather than later. Perfect. All right. Talk to you soon. (laughs) Hey, traders, Blake Morrow here. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Also click the bell notifications so you do not miss any of our market related trading analysis from some of the leading industry experts. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you in the next video.